Hello and welcome to London Property, the home of Super Prime. I am your host, Farnas Pazaipo. Today, we're delighted to welcome Marco Pazzi of Global MP Properties to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. The topic today is actually Pieratez, which technically actually means one foot on the ground. And this is what people call houses in countries where they're not living that they use. What Marco does is a lot more special than that. And I'm going to hand over to him to explain to us, in his own words, how he got to be here today. Thank you. So I came to London 15 years ago and I started working in properties on the acquisition side. And right after having purchased a few properties for overseas buyers, uh, the team and I realized that actually it was very, very important to help them manage the property. Because once you're not here and you're not on the ground, uh, problems arise in properties as everywhere else. So having somebody competent who looks after your property is of essence for the success of the acquisition itself, I would say. So basically, we started by looking after empty flats, both as pied terre and we ended up today managing over 100 properties, uh, even when people actually reside in the properties, because uh, a, a property is like a person. They need to be looked after constantly and regardless of the occupancy. So uh, when you said something more, than, more special than that is because we realized in time that a lived-in home still needs actually the affection and the care that an empty home needs. I was actually talking to, to a very, very well-respected agent in one of our market updates. And I said to him, what's your best piece of advice about uh, how to enhance the value of your property investments. And he said, look after it. Yeah. And I couldn't agree more with that because yeah. actually uh, nothing ages more than an empty property. And then uh, when you've spent your money into the purchase of a property, then you want your money to continue, actually keep and enhance their value, its value. And the best way to do so is to look after the property and to make sure that everything functions, that you know the ordinary and extraordinary maintenance is carried out regularly, as well as yeah, give a little bit of life to a property that is often closed or you know not used. That's very very important, and that agent was very right. So, what are the main challenges that that you think people who live overseas uh, face now that you've had the experience of doing this for fifteen years? for high net worth individuals who probably have more than one property, not just in London, but other homes. Um, what are the main challenges that you think that they face when somebody like you is not involved? The first challenge is actually uh, the use of the property because when they fly in and they want to be home, uh, it's difficult to feel at home if the home's been empty. And if somebody has not thought about your arrival and the way you would like to find your home, and not your house to feel like when you step into it. Because maintaining a house is one thing, making somebody feeling at home is a completely different matter. So uh, that is the first challenge for them. So to have this feeling of entering to a place that is alive, where somebody has thought what to do, what to look after, has put flowers on the table, and has made it feel like as if somebody was living there the day before. And then you have technical challenges because things break. So you arrive after a long old flight and you want to take a shower and the water is not hot enough and the, uh, something breaks in, uh, with the boiler because it hasn't been used. So the technical part, and we have a full team in place for that. Uh, and also, yeah, those two mainly are, in my view, the challenges that they face. So one is more personal and one is more technical. And the other thing that I've come across, and obviously I'm not as deeply involved as you are in, in, in this subject, is that a lot of times when people live abroad, they might have a housekeeper yeah. that looks after the property. But yeah. then the housekeeper can't deal with some of the legal aspects, some of the financial aspects. Yeah. And also, if you, if you are a foreigner, it's actually quite complicated to hire people here. Absolutely. So can you talk to us a little bit more about the staffing? Yeah, so we, we have gone through this process of like kind of choosing trusted people to be uh, in these homes because they're empty. And so the first element you need to have is trust uh, into the people that are working in the house. Some people send stuff over, but it's not always the case. And so 
if you don't have that kind of arrangement, you need to find somebody that you're comfortable with having at home without you, basically preparing the home for you or the flat for you. And, um, and also the legal aspects of hiring this person, making sure everything is fine, the insurance if anything happens. So all of this that kind of turns around the topic of hiring somebody working for you is uh, one of the things we look after for the client. And uh, if you want to put it this way, I think that the cleaner or the maid is basically somebody on the ground that we direct and help in making sure that they execute what the principals want. So it's a, it's a very relevant and an, uh, a very relevant part of, uh, of the team, but it needs to have basically a direction and they need, they need to be provided with a direction from our office as to what to do and how to do it. Most um, of the time. But also more technically, if you, if you are a foreigner, you can't actually hire people in this country. You've got to be a local, no? Yeah, you have to have a structure in place here. Yeah. And so we offer that kind of arrangement for people and we are able to help you hire somebody uh, local to look after your property in the UK. So I know that, uh, you know, it's a very discreet business that you're in, but very. if you were to say one of your biggest challenges without giving any too much information away, what would you say would be one of the biggest challenges you've resolved for uh, one of your clients? I think everything um, is about understanding your client, no matter which background they have. It's a matter of understanding the way they want to live. Once you understand the rhythm of their life, their expectation and what they want and what they're used to, then it's easier to kind of fine tune the service and customize it to for them. So that's, um, the, 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 the real challenge is to understand. Once you, you know, overcome that step, easy. It's, so whatever, you know, whatever problem they have, it's really about the communication that you have with the client yes, to resolve it for them. You understand the genesis of the problem. And so when you understand that, you're able to solve it or you try your best to, do, to solve it. So following on from that question, I'm going to ask you to share with us your best success story. Okay, so I'll, I'm, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> success story for me means to offer and provide the client with a real service and added value. So um, I could mention a search for a property that lasted over six or seven years. And the reason why I always opposed to buying something that the clients liked was because I thought that property was not for them or maybe, you know, I would analyze their lifestyle. Um, understand the property that they liked and they didn't match. They never matched. And maybe in the short term, it would have been a success purchase. But then I knew that for the kind of things they were sharing when we were speaking about the way they want to live, their understanding of London, even in terms of neighborhoods, for instance, London has many souls. And if you come from the United States, if you come from very different parts of the world, uh, you need to understand which parts of London reflect your lifestyle and it takes time for them to understand the differences between Notting Hill, Hampstead, Halsey, Mayfair and I think that uh, accompanying them through this journey and understanding each neighbor neighborhood is a very relevant part of the process and uh, if you have a certain spirit you need to find the right property but also the right environment and the right location for the property. Otherwise, it will be a short-term love story and we want long-term ones. Right, exactly. So that you, you, you build relationships, you know, for the long-term rather than the benefit of what goes into my pocket today, which exactly. is him uh, sheet I yeah. sing from. I totally agree with you. It can work, but there's no added bug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you were to, to give a piece of advice to somebody who's not using a service, <laughs> what would you recommend that they put on their list of things to do by themselves? Well, they have to treat their overseas investment, Pieta Terre mentioned, whatever that is, as if it was their main home, because that is the level of, of care that is requested to maintain the investment and to enjoy the property at the same time. If they think, oh, I can forget about that property because you know I'm only using it once a year, or twice a year, then the, the property will devalue and when you go and open the door of your home, 
you will be very surprised about what you find. So they need to treat it as if it was their typical home, a main home. That would be my piece of advice. So now uh, going back to the global part of the name, uh, was that a natural transition? You started in London and uh, this takes you, I mean, I, I'm assuming that there is kind of a connection between a similarity of areas that, that some of your London clients have properties in. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. can you talk to us a little bit about how that So that Global works? was born because I'm not from here originally, as you, as you know. And so uh, it was comforting to know that I wasn't only putting all the eggs in one basket, which wasn't mine, in case it didn't work out. And then actually it became of essence because I, we operate in different countries. So um, I have a team that assists me in Miami. I have a team that assists me in Paris. I have a team in Monaco. So, um, you know, global now is actually the word that is relevant in the name of the company because we are able to assist clients uh, in many places other than London. Of course, the percentages of the business is London, like mainly, but uh, other places are becoming more and more relevant. And that's existing London clients taking you to yeah, different places. Yeah, it's, uh, it's become more of a like client focused business rather than a property focused business. Of course, the two go together because it's always property related, but at the same time, uh, when you establish a certain level of trust, people are happy for you to go and explore the ability of and the possibility of assisting them elsewhere. So and what are some of the common themes that come hand in hand with looking after the property? I mean, we've touched on when we're off camera about art and storage and, and, and insurance of the yeah. art, but just some of the really common things that, that come up. Well, I like, thinking, I like thinking that a home is like a stage. And the stage works as long as you have a backstage. So in order for a room to look great or for a reception to look great, you need to have the back of the house. And uh, storage, um, other type of services, they are ancillary, but as relevant to enjoy your home as it is something you see on a table or an object or a piece of art. And uh, you know maybe you're walking around a, an art fair somewhere in the world, and you want to ship something to the London home. So somebody needs to look after the custom duties, needs to know who handles art with care in London. So there's a full machine and mechanism that needs to be in place in order for the piece of art you've seen in uh, Tefaf to be on your wall in London, safe and sound, insured, and with no danger. So for instance, that's something we can do. And uh, many other examples like along this line, so right. what you see is basically the last scene of the show. Okay, so the pre-production yeah. goes into planes, trains and automobiles, I guess. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, uh, it's been really informative listening to you. Thank you. And uh, I think for our listeners out there, uh, it's really important to understand that it's part of the wealth property wealth preservation and enhancing the property world yep. is looking after their property absolutely and uh you know when you are far away having someone who understands the whole thing is really important so uh we'll be make sure to stay in touch and uh hopefully With pleasure, you'll be able to hurt some of our, yeah, of course. our listeners thank you for coming to the show so if you are an overseas investor or you have a property in london or you're considering buying a property in london there are many aspects that you need to take into consideration here at london property will be able to guide you and connect you with the right professionals to help you on that journey.